Spencer and today I'm going to show you how I go about varying my mark making with pastels and Conte crayons. To start with we've got some charcoal and then I've got two different kinds of Conte crayon. I've got a brown one and a, a black one. The black ones tend to be much harder, almost waxier, so they're much better for detail. A Unison pastel which is very soft. I've got a white Conte crayon and a white Unison pastel because I want to show you the difference in the hardness and how that really affects your work. I've got a couple of pastel pencils and I've got a scalpel which is a really important part of my toolkit because with that I can do what I've done here which is cut little bits, little shards off the pastels um, to get some really nice um, sharp edges. It's these sharp little edges and shards that I get my detail with, not necessarily with a pastel pencil. I've got um, Pencil rubber, just ordinary pencil rubber, gets very dirty. I just cut little bits off it to get it clean. And also, again, to have something sharp. I've got a couple of um, Unison pastels. I've got a couple of pan pastels here, which I don't tend to use very much, but they're great for laying a soft base down underneath whatever you're going to be doing. And I've got a little collection here of um, blues and greens and... Um, the colours that I need for what I'm going to be drawing, and this is what I'm going to be drawing, I've got a peacock feather, um, a bit of sweet corn, an um, artichoke head which is dried which has got very dark spiky bits, and I've got a very light and prickly um, teasel. So first of all, starting, starting with the charcoal, um, I'm going to have a look at what happens when I apply it on. Charcoal is really lovely and um, it's, it's, it's very loose. So I can put it on and press really hard and it breaks. But if I, if I press very, very gently, I can get a mark almost as fine as a hair. And if I put a bit on and give it a bit of a rub, you can see how much it softens down very, very quickly and easily. With the... Um, with a brown contact crayon. You can hear, hear the sort of noise it makes. Again, varying my pressure. So very, very heavy, very, very light. And then see what happens when it, you give it a bit of a, 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 a bit a bit of a swish. And moving along swiftly, this is the um, this is the, the, the black contact crayon. You can see immediately it's much harder and kind of waxier, but look how fine, look how fine that line is. Um, and when I put it on and give it a bit of a rub, it's not coming off anywhere near as easily as, as, as those two. So onto the Unison Pastel, which is really soft, really rich in pigment. And it's much harder to make a, um, I can make a big strong line, much harder to make a, a very fine line with it. Um, and you can see when I when I put it on and soften it, how much it uh, you still get a real richness, rich velvetiness of pigment on the surface. So I give my hand a bit of a clean. This is the um, white Conte crayon. I'm pressing hard with that and then coming off with it. There's a lovely quality to that. That's really nice. I give it a bit of a give it a bit of a soften. You can take it off quite well. If I compare that to the Unison Pastel, you can see how much richer the, the pigment is in that. And I can get quite a nice sharp mark with that one, surprisingly. Even within um, one kind of manufacturer, the pigments will behave differently. And you get a, you get a, a white when you um, soften it that still, still jumps out quite a lot. In comparison, the Pastel Pencils, you can get a very, very fine line with them, but you can't get, you can see how the, the pigment that is contained in them is quite a lot kind of weaker, because basically um, everything is a mixture between a pigment and a binder. The binder holds it onto the surface. Um, these have to be quite hard, otherwise the, the lead is going to break really easily. So the downside of that is that you don't get a really rich pigment. So if I want to look now at the different types of marks with them, I can use, this is charcoal and this is a contact layer. I can use them on their, um, on their end to do the precise marks that I've just been talking about. I can use them on their edge to make, to make a mark that gets quite a lot of 
energy in, into that line. And I can also use them on their um, kind of side to kind of block in big areas. Um, now you can see that that's a kind of that's when you can really start to get some kind of energy in into the sort of mark that you're making. What I really like is what happens when you combine that and that and you get a mark that twists and turns. So you can really kind of change that feeling of the flow, the direction, the weight of it. Um, also, if you alter the um, pressure that you put onto it, um, as you kind of work into your marks, can you see how you can get some really exciting and um, interesting things happening. Also, one of the great advantages of pastel over, say, pencil drawing is that you can build up layers. So using just a little bit of um, plastic with a straight edge, I can actually put a really light light over a dark dark. That's when drawing with pastels and contained charcoal can get really, really interesting. This is only a cheap paper that I'm using, it's just sugar paper. Um, this sort of work you can do on any surface. It's probably not a good idea to use a really textured surface because it'll interrupt the flow of your marks. But what we're gonna do now is look at how we can use these to capture the essence of an actual thing. Very loosely sketched it in with charcoal. That's simply because I wanna be able to get them all on the, the, the paper. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna hold it. So none of my drawings are gonna have shadows on them. And I'm just going to think about where the essential marks are. And there's a kind of flat base here. I'm using, I'm, I'm using my brown Conte, which is a kind of like a mid, a mid drawing tone. Just getting a feel for where the main shapes are. And the kind of um, proportions of it. And as I draw it in, I'm using it on its kind of long edge. I'm just interested in capturing the kind of feeling of this flowing shape. As I draw this bit down here that's quite heavy, I'm pressing, hard, pressing quite hard. But as I come up further up here and it gets very light and flowing, I'm coming off with my pressure. What I'm also making use of is the fact that I've got a mid-tone paper. So I can um, use the, the colour of the paper as my mid-tone and then I can, I'm just going to use a bit of white to just get a feel for where my, my lightest lights are, having put my darker lines in. And again, always with a feeling to the flow. This is a really lovely leaf that comes over here. So everything I'm thinking about, that kind of flow upwards. And these little um, raggedy bits at the top, you can just touch it, touch it in very, very gently. 
So it's great to experiment with sheets of marks like I did earlier to try to get a feel for how you can control the weight of the marks that you're putting on. So that's my kind of, that's the feeling that I'm trying to get. So that was the one that I did that I worked into more and it was on a white background so I used my um, pan pastel to just put a little bit of a base underneath it but again same feeling of lightening the pressure as I got up and thinking about the flow of the curve. For the flow of the peacock feather, it's quite a raggedy little peacock feather but what I've got is other ones to look at so that I can um, change it if I want to. I'm just thinking about this curve, the curve that comes all the way around there, there's a real flow to that. Um, because I'm working on such a big piece it's hard to um, it's hard to film it for a video so I'm just going to focus on this little bit at the top and I'm not going to do a great deal of this because it's very very time consuming. That curve is really important and I'm working on a large scale because it's much easier to do on a large scale. Um, pastels can be quite difficult if you're trying to work really small. Um, so I just want to get this feeling of the flow of my curve. So this is my sort of idea of just getting it, just getting it sketched in. This is a um, pastel pencil. So to get those really kind of soft, very delicate ones. But still, light, 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 light as a feather all the time, that's what I'm thinking. If I felt that I needed more weight to any of these, I can just come over and add, add a bit more in. So when I did my final, when, when I was working on the one for the article, you can see that's the same thing going on here, but it's on a, it's on a white surface. Um, and I've just built more and more layers up um, around the actual peacock feather and just just constantly thought about the flow, coming off with the pressure, just skimming over the surface. So for the artichoke, I feel this, it's, it's a much heavier thing to have in my hand and it's got some really, really hard points but it's very soft in the middle here and then some delicate little petals here. So without doing the whole thing, this is just wafting a little bit of um, a kind of under colour on it with um, the pan pastel, um, the pan pastel and a bit of tissue. So what we've got here, I don't know whether you can see, are very strong contrasts of light and dark. Really dark inside and there's some rubbish triangle shapes. Um, so there's two ways I can get the hardness to this. First one is by really 
making my marks much um, stronger. I'm going to have to hold the side of the board here because it's going to want to um, stop to move about. So I can make some really strong marks. But where I've got my gentle um, seeds themselves, I could be much softer and more gentle with it. So I'm, I'm kind of tickling the surface and I'm smudging and softening as I go. So if you are used to doing um, very detailed um, drawings, this is probably not the way that you go about doing it. So having put those hard bits on, I then want to get a little bit of... I oh, see that's a, that's a contact crane, it hasn't got enough power in it, so I'm going to go on to a, a soft pastel. And it, I just give it some flicks like that. I can get a real kind of start to get a contrast going. And I know, I know they're jumping out a lot at the moment, but they can be softened in. By just adding on a bit of, a bit of soft pastel like this can just give it a bit. The, the, see, this, this pastel is much more solid. This is, this is very light. This, although it's a similar colour, there's a there's a heaviness to it. You end up getting something that's really kind of, you know it's there. Let's add a little bit of a, there's some little bit of purple here. I know I've said I'm not using colour, but just a little bit. And there's some little sort of fluffy bits. And again, such a light pressure here because um, I don't want it to be, um, I, I want you to feel as though they could float away. Okay, so that's kind of the essence of um, that, that artichoke. I'm just going to put some little darker, this is just a bit of charcoal, just to give it a little bit more depth with some of those bits. And on the piece on white, you can see I um, it looks even heavier, I think, on here because of the background being white. But here I just let some of my under painting, my under drawing um, just show because I like the idea of um, it not being precisely fixed on the um, on the surface. I was holding it in my hand, it was moving slightly. Last of all, the teasel. Just very, very quickly, if I want to draw something like this that's got lights over darks, I'm going to put my darks in first. I'll put a little bit of black on underneath because there's a, there's a darker, darker dark in there, just some ponte. An oomph with a bit of pastel. So that's my dark, my deep dark. And then to go over that, use my rubber as a kind of drawing tool as well where I've gone over there. In fact I can rub into that to get a bit of a feathered edge to it and then to add my kind of sharp sharp bits, tiny little tiny little lighter marks hardly touching the surface thinking about what it feels to touch and then um, some of those are even lighter. That's my white contour, just broken a bit off so I've got a shard and I can get a much sharper line with it because there's no point trying to do this sort of sharp little mark without a really sharp implement in your hand. And then I can put some little tiny Inside those little light marks, there's some little dark marks. It's 
see here I've made much sharper marks um, to get a real um, sharp delicacy to it. So thank you for watching. The best advice I can give you is to do as many experiments as you can. Use up loads of paper. The more you try out marks, the more fun you'll have and you'll find what really works for you.